Hi, my name is Ryan from JK Adventure. Today we are going to mount some monster valves onto our alloy wheels. I've got a pair of uh, spider lock wheels here with regular conventional air valves and we're going to put some power tank monster valves on them. Stay tuned. Okay, you're looking at my tool collection here. I've got two drills. I prefer the heavy duty corded one, but you can definitely get away with a smaller one, even a micro drill like pictured. I also have several different tools. I have some kind of uh, um, thread locker. You can use Loctite. You can use a plumber locker. You can even use tape if you want to. I also have a tap and drill. I like to buy brand new ones and I went recommended with what uh, Power Tank recommends which would be a 7 16 drill bit and then I have three other drill bits uh, in order to help make it uh, an easier drilling process and then a quarter inch 18 NTP pipe tap. The pipe tap is the key here. Make sure it's a pipe tap. It's very different from a regular quarter inch tap. So make sure you get the pipe tap. And then I also have a couple utensils to make a jig, a measuring tape, and some other things. Okay, I'm going to start out by just making a very simple uh, template. I'm going to start across from the regular one because I want the two valves to be across from each other. And I've started by just taking a corrugated piece of cardboard, pushing it flat, and then slicing off the side to get a nice flush mount. And you'll notice that somebody before me has already lined up the holes. So I'm just going to mark where the holes are and then straight out from, the, from where that is, once it's all lined up, I'm just going to take my pen, put a mark there, and that shows me right where I want to be on the V. And I'm going to take my hole punch, Start with the hole punch and put the punch right there. And the punch is going to help me get started with the drill. Okay, you're going to make sure this is all flat. Hold your drill as flat and level as possible. Okay, I always like to have a vacuum ready so I can vacuum up all the little shrapnel. If you don't vacuum it up right away, it gets everywhere, as some of you guys know. And then we're going to just switch out the uh, bit here. And I step up four times all together. So I'm just going to take the small one out, put the next size up. And once that next drill bit's in, you're just going to find your hole and do the same thing again. Okay, we'll go to the third one now. Same thing. And you don't have to push very hard as you can see. It's just a little bit of pressure, especially if you have a big torquey drill like this. Okay, now before I start this last one, I'll make a note just to say that the last one, it's really important to stay that you uh, make sure you stay perpendicular and parallel so you don't make a bigger hole than what you really need to. So I'm gonna spend a little more time really lining this up. Um, I'm gonna look right here, line it up, make sure it's perfect use my hand as a guide right here and make sure I get it right on. Okay, for this one you just want to apply a little bit of uh, cutting oil. You really don't need much at all. Um, and then you want to make sure you start nice and square And just keep turning and then you also want to back off the other way. So you want to go both ways. 
Take a turn, back it off. Take a turn, back it off. So when you're turning it, you can feel the resistance for the most part. As it starts to get really tight, you just want to back off one little step. And do it again. Nice thing about once you get started is you don't have to worry so much about it going in straight. So about one full turn, and then you want to come off about a quarter turn for every for every full to three quarter turn. Then once you get pretty deep, you want to back it off. And then we're going to try our monster valve. What are you talking about? And you want to screw it all the way in as far as you can go. I'm getting real tight right about there. So I'm probably going to tap it just a little bit more because I've got a little sticking out. Even if I get a wrench on here, I'm going to have a little, so I'm just going to tap it a little bit more. For the last part of the cutting stage, I, I like to uh, use something with a little more grip on it. And typically when you cut, you want to do one, two turns, then come back off about a quarter turn, and then go again. So that's one, two, come back off, set it, keep going. And you'll feel the resistance. I just forgot and did three. You feel it right away when you hit that resistance point. And right when you hit that point where you know you really got to torque it out, that's where you want to go back the other direction. All right, I uh, tapped it just a little bit further. I've got some Teflon tape on it. You might also use thread locker. I'd go with the red one if you never plan on taking it out again. The blue maybe if you do or pipe thread compound will do the job too. Any of those, when these come, they already come with a little bit of the locker on them and that one would work. I would suggest using one of these for your tester and then putting it on your spare or uh, putting new thread tape on it at the end before you get going since the, we kind of wore the tape off of there. Now I'm also going to take these down now to the local shop and get them powder coated. So I'm not going to leave this in. I'm going to pull it out and I'm just going to put a small bolt in the hole there just so they can powder coat around it. That's it. So that's the whole process start to finish. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, you can find lots more answers on this thread at jk-adventure.com. Have a great day.